Hello, welcome to a new video. Google's new 45 watt USB-C charger is out and I think it's worth checking out. So 45 watts is an interesting power level for a USB charger. You're probably thinking, who cares, right? Is this gonna charge my phone? Yes, it is. But as I do here, there's more to the story. Like what is the power performance like? How isolated is this thing? And does it overheat under full load? So stay tuned to find out if this power adapter meets the requirements or if it's just another junk bin adapter. There's affiliate links, which earn me a couple percent, but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. Of course, this one isn't on Amazon yet, but there is a link to the Google store, non-affiliate. Okay, go oh, shit. I can't say that. This is the new Google 45 watt power adapter. This adapter, as the previous 30 watt adapter, is not the most compact thing out there. It has fixed plugs, which has the benefit of being less breakable, no moving parts. The single USB-C port is kind of a letdown in some ways. A lot of people seem to have two devices to charge at least. So a phone and earbuds or a watch or something else. There are some advantages to a single port though. That'll be apparent in the power performance. That single USB-C port can do a bunch of modes though, as is common on new adapters. No 12 volt fixed mode. The PPS is available in three flavors though, 11, 16, and 21 volts. The current limit decreases with each level. So three amps max on the 11 volt mode means this will not support Samsung super fast 45 watt charging. Even though the power is available, the current is not. Once power is plugged in, the usage of this adapter is nice and low. It drops to a very low value after a very short period. This is excellent. On 230 volts, it does increase, but still reasonable. Under a light load, like a cable or a MagSafe charging puck plugged in, this charger does excellent. The power level stays quite low, less than others with nothing plugged in. So this is well optimized for low power level performance. On the normal power level, the performance is good. As expected for a power adapter of this type, there is no power factor correction. That's the thing that corrects the shape of the AC current waveform. If you are only using one of these, the extra power loss is taken care of by the high efficiency. 45 watts out and only 48 and a half watts in. Note that this gets worse on 230 volts, so this adapter is optimized for use on 120 volt. It does still work just fine on 230 though. If you plan to use a lot of these, that high current usage could create issues. It distorts the voltage waveform significantly. I've done an analysis of why the power factor would be so low, framework power adapter, it's extra input capacitance. This will actually help this thing last longer. If it doesn't get too hot and the auxiliary capacitor doesn't burn up, see the Anchor 240 watt video, or they use a solid type, it may really last a long time. Links in the description. The performance for this power adapter is pretty good. The efficiency is great from 10% all the way to maximum load. The high efficiency makes it really stand out. Of note here is the voltage on the USB port. It always holds the value. The adapter adjusts the voltage as the current or power level goes up. So it doesn't drop like many other USB adapters. The regulation is very good. The ripple is stable across all the test points. So your devices shouldn't have any issues with this adapter. Note, three amps is the maximum current on the USB port though. So certain protocols that need more amps won't work. All AC power adapters have to have separation or isolation between the mains and the DC side of the power adapter. This separation is important so you don't get shocked. This is measured as leakage current. The lower the leakage current, the better the adapter performs. In practical terms, this is the tingling feeling you get when using your laptop or phone with certain adapters. In terms of isolation, this adapter is a best in class adapter. Really, this is one of the best I've seen. Okay, thermal time. Well, continuing the theme, we already saw the higher efficiency of this adapter all the way up to the full load value. So this thing is only dissipating about three and a half watts in the case while under a full load. And that should not be too difficult to thermally manage. And it does great here. One of the cooler options out there for the power level. They shouldn't have any problem meeting any of those claims of thermal values in the user manual. It's almost like they tested it. What the hell is everyone else doing? Looking at the adapter under a full power load, there is one component in the adapter that does the job of converting the AC voltage to a DC voltage. This component is called a full bridge rectifier. Insert clip of Electroboom here. Production crew is gonna get in trouble for that one. In this case, the little ripple is the AC side and the plus and minus are the DC side. This component has a fixed voltage drop and we can measure the RMS current flowing through it on the analyzer. So in this case, the 1.4 volt drop two diodes, and the current of 0.8 amps means the power dissipation is about 1.2 watts in just this one component. 
So one third of the power loss from this adapter is from this one component. When the efficiency gets this high, these tiny parts start to matter. There are claims of 96% on some adapters. This one component means that's just out of reach. It's not impossible, but they aren't going bridgeless in a sub 100 watt power adapter for cost, size, or return on investment. Time to do some comparisons. The obvious is the IKEA 45 watt two port adapter, of course. This one is actually a hollow shell. I still need to get that teardown video finished. The adapter on appearance is very similar size to the IKEA, but it has very rounded edges. It actually makes the adapter extremely difficult to hold onto. I dropped it so many times just making this video. It still works, so that's good. In terms of the weight, this adapter is okay. It's obviously a bit larger than some of the others, so it does weigh a bit more. The Anchor Nano 2 45 watt is more compact and lighter. The 100 watt old Prime is the density winner though. In terms of the idle performance, it's excellent. The 30 watt was excellent when it was tested. This also lives up to that performance. Not only this, but under light load, this one is one of the most efficient adapters I've seen. So even with a wireless charging puck plugged in, this is still very low idle power usage. On the graph, it's just not a fair comparison. This wins. It's a breath of fresh air to see this level of performance from a power adapter. The IKEA isn't far off. In terms of the average performance, this adapter's average efficiency, specifically looking at the DOE 6 efficiency, that means 25 to 100% load efficiency, is excellent again. It's so far above the requirement that even with the low power quality, it more than makes up for that little bit of extra loss. The IKEA sits at the bottom on the efficiency curve in this comparison, so you can clearly see something here. You are paying for something different. Okay, let's talk about value. Yeah, the Google isn't the cheapest option out there. It's a premium adapter, and it costs more than the IKEA, about twice as much. As explored, the performance is better, but you get one less port. And in terms of energy cost, it is going to have to last a very long time to make up for that extra expensive price. Based on the power performance and the thermals though, you can expect a good long life out of this charger. Conclusion time. So, it's another good Google adapter. The 30 watt was, and still is, a decent option. This continues that trend of quality from Google. If you need to charge a lot of devices, it becomes a poor choice. But just as a take-along charger for charging your phone, it's one of the most efficient options on the market. The power is very good on the DC output. The isolation is in the excellent category. And the higher efficiency also means this adapter is one of the most thermally stable adapters you can get. The AC power quality is low, but this is expected for a 45 watt level power adapter. The trade-off is the apparent efficiency will be a little bit lower if you use more than one. The effect squares. It does lack a 12 volt fixed mode. It also does not support 45 watt Samsung fast charging as the maximum current the device will deliver is 3 amps in a PPS or programmable power mode. It is also a bit expensive for what you're going to get, but you're paying a premium for a premium adapter and actually getting something premium. So a couple drawbacks, but in this case, that efficiency, isolation, and DC stability make it one of the best chargers out there. Google is only a little evil. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.